a lot of people are confused by what carnivore even means. And so many people who are eating a plant-based diet, a highly inflammatory, high carbohydrate diet, they've been avoiding meat. And so they think a carnivore diet means that you're eating some meat. And so they'll add back in some fish or chicken or something to their, their vegan or vegetarian diet. And then after a few weeks of that, they're like, I don't really feel any better. I don't feel any different. So then they'll say, oh, I tried carnivore. It didn't work for me. And so one thing that you have to understand is carnivore is an elimination diet. To be a true carnivore, at least for the first 90 days, you need to eat nothing but meat and maybe eggs with the yolk and maybe some butter and ghee, or ghee, just the, the fat component of dairy, not the protein, not the sugar part of dairy. And do that for 90 days. Then you can make a meaningful assessment of did carnivore improve anything for me or not. But a lot of people don't understand this. Carnivore is getting very popular. You have millions of people out there who don't think about diet or nutrition at all. They don't even know what a what the three macronutrients are. They don't they don't know that. They don't know it and they don't care. But they keep hearing about this carnivore diet. And they're like, oh, okay, so I'm going to start eating some chicken with my plant-based diet, or I'm going to start to have some grass-fed, grass-finished panda massage, you know, beef with just maybe, but maybe just two ounces because, you know, meat's inflammatory and it causes diabetes. Well, they haven't heard the full message. They're just seeing the hashtag and they're seeing the, 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 the shorts and the reels and the TikToks, but they're not doing the research because they don't give a damn about nutrition and the facts about it. And so that's why we need more people like you and more people like the people in our private community who have started a YouTube channel or started an Instagram just talking about nutrition. Because human beings are, as a matter of fact, the only species of mammal on the planet that's confused about what it should eat. No other mammal has this problem. They, a cow knows exactly what they should eat and what they should avoid. And they know how much to eat and they know when to eat and they know when to stop eating. You don't have to tell them. They don't have to take a course. They don't have to sign up for, for something. They don't have to take, they don't have to do any of that. They just eat when they're hungry and they stop eating when they're full. They know what to eat and what to avoid. Humans, the smartest, arguably the smartest mammal on the planet, has the most trouble with this. And that's because of the profit motive. There are people trying to make a buck off what you eat and what you don't eat. By, whether by selling the food or selling the book that tells you what to eat or selling the supplement because you're not eating, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so that that's a huge thing for people is to understand the complete argument for carnivore. It's not just adding some meat to your high carb inflammatory diet. That's not carnivore. Carnivore is the complete elimination of all things carbohydrate and all things inflammatory and so uh, how we get that message out to the masses so that we don't have hundreds of thousands of people saying, oh, I tried carnivore. It didn't help me a bit. I didn't feel any better at all. And that's because they added two ounces of, of beef to their once a week to their diet and they couldn't tell any difference. It, this is kind of like the alcoholic who's drinking, you know, three liters of, of liquor a day. And they say, well, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop drinking beer and I'm going to eat two ounces of beef a day. Is that alcoholic going to feel any different? No, they're still an alcoholic. They're still poisoning their body. It's only when you remove all the alcohol and you just add back in water and meat does that alcoholic, after the DT process, they, they feel miraculously better. And that's what happens if you're on a plant-based inflammatory diet. You can't just add a little bit of meat back. You have to go carnivore for 90 days. And then you can you can experiment with adding things back or not. But I think there's thousands, millions of people out there that don't understand that one key concept about carnivores. We need to be, keep getting the word out like we're all trying to do so that people know how to do carnivore right. One of the powers of a carnivore diet is that it is an elimination diet. And so what you're doing is you're eliminating everything from your diet except for meat and eggs with the yolk for some people uh, if you decide to do beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And so you're going to be re removing hundreds of foods from your diet that, and that's going to remove thousands, if not tens of thousands of chemicals. <clears throat> 
Now, these are naturally occurring chemicals and also man-made chemicals. And so when you, when you start a carnivore diet, you're going to be re removing virtually all of the glyphosate from your diet. Uh, many people think oats are very healthy. They eat them every day. They don't realize that one of the last stages before oats are harvested is they're desiccated by being drenched in glyphosate. And some of that glyphosate winds up in your bowl of, of oats. And so although many of the plants that, that animals eat are treated with glyphosate, especially in the ruminant animals, their magical four chamber stomach is able to eliminate virtually all of that. And so when you eat the meat of that ruminant, you're, you're gonna be getting a minuscule amount, if any, of glyphosate and all the other chemicals that pervade our modern society. Uh, and so by eliminating all these things, and then you're gonna also be eliminating the phytates, the lectins, the oxalates, all the other phytochemicals that plants put in their in their flesh as a means of pesticide and to, to prevent insects from eating them. And also, I, I think that they're humicides as well. I think they don't want humans to eat them they, just as much as they don't want insects to eat them. And so many of these phytochemicals, these polyphenols, uh, people act like that they're a good thing that they're in plants and a good thing that you eat lots and lots of them. And they talk about the hormetic stress that comes from eating these phytochemicals. Uh, I think we can just say, we, we, you know, you, if I came to Turkey right now, Rena, and slapped you in the face, that would be a stress. And, and I guess you could pretend that it was hormetic if you'd like to, but I think in the end, it's just a stress and I shouldn't have slapped you and you shouldn't have been slapped. And so that's one of the very powerful things about a carnivore diet is you remove all those stressor chemicals that you were exposing your body to each and every day. And for many people, that's the answer. Everybody should start their carnivore diet with a one-to-one -one fat to, pro to protein ratio, not in macros, but in ounce per ounce what you eat, uh, an ounce of red meat, an ounce of the fat, right? One to one, that's the great place for everybody to start. Now, for some very few people, that may be too high in fat initially. If they don't have a gallbladder, if they have gallbladder problems, if, if they have other issues going on, that may be too much fat initially. But I don't think for any human on the planet, that's too much fat. That's a dangerous amount of fat. I do not, I don't see any research supporting that opinion. Now, I, there are some people who do great on a high protein adequate fat diet for weight loss for other issues they do great on that but in my experience the vast majority of people the 80 percent do better on a higher fat yet adequate protein carnivore diet now some people bump the fat up to 80 percent and they do great they lose weight like like gangbusters they're reversing chronic medical conditions they feel better they sleep better their, their mental capacity is better. Other people, that seems to be too much fat for them. So again, the normal distribution curve applies to that question as well. And so I don't think you can make a blanket statement. You should never eat this much fat or you should always eat this much fat. I don't think you know the answer to that unless you've done your 30, 60 or 90 days. And it also could change depending on where you're at in your journey. And so let's take an example. A woman is overweight, she wants to lose weight. She doesn't have a gallbladder. Should she? So, okay, so she, should she start with 80-20 fat to protein? Maybe if she can stomach it, but that may give her severe gastrointestinal symptoms for a few days or a few weeks. Is that going to turn her off to keto? Is she going to say, oh, I mean carnivore. Oh, carnivore didn't work for me. I couldn't tolerate it. And then she goes back to her standard American diet. Have we won or have we lost in that situation, right? So what if she started at a one-to-one? She had just a few days of GI distress and then it was gone. Then she now she's eating carnivore. Is that better than a standard American diet? Hell yes. Now she can play around. Let me bump the fat up. Let me bump the protein up. I don't know why people want to become apostolic. I don't know why people want to become immediately proselytizers. And, and, and carnivore police and carnivore Nazis. I think it's just inherent in some people to, to take on that persona, 
but it's not helpful. And so if you feel yourself being a militant about any particular thing in, in carnivore or ketivore or keto, stop that. You're not helping anybody. Nobody wants to hear that shit, first of all. And secondly, there's a normal distribution curve that you may be currently ignorant of. You may not know that there's such a concept in human physiology and nutrition. So you need to shut up with, with the carnivore Nazi crap and let people experiment. Let them try stuff. Because I promise you, when they find their sweet spot on the fat to protein, on the ruminant versus poultry, on the, the ruminant versus seafood, I would not be surprised if there are people from certain ethnic backgrounds with certain DNA who do better on a seafood heavy carnivore diet. That would not surprise me in the least. And they can have ruminant meat and it's totally fine, but they feel their best when they're eating fatty seafood and, and crustaceans and mollusks. And they, they just feel better. That would not surprise me at all. So let's be less dogmatic about our beliefs. Let's be less militant about our beliefs. Uh, look, we, you can be dogmatic and militant about carnivore is the best way for the vast majority of people. Yes, 100%. Don't shut up saying that. But if you're then now you wanting to niche down and you found what works for you, my friend, that may not work for everybody. That may not be where their carnivore diet needs to be. So be a little more understanding, a little more accepting, and a little less dogmatic. That's just like the the, the honey and the fruit question with some of our carnivore-ish brothers and sisters. I would never do that myself. I would never give Beckett a, a, a carnivore-ish or a super carnivore diet that's rich in fruit and honey. I would not do that to him because I love him and I want the best health for him. But these people, they seem to be getting benefits from that right now. And outside of the hidden glycation that they can't detect, maybe that's where they need to be right now. But I don't think that's a, a safe place for them to, to hang out long term. Does that make sense? And so let's be met less militant and Nazi-like within the carnivore community. But when it comes to proselytizing a proper human diet, let's never shut up doing that to people who are currently eating the, the standard high-carb, high highly inflammatory crap. Let's never stop trying to help pull them under the huge tent that, that, that protects the proper human diet community. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to get the next episode in two days.